So let us do a review of cell division and in this case we're going to talk about the cell division which is mitosis and uh, this is important for the continuity of life whether it be a single cell organism or multicellular organisms. Now there are three major reasons we undergo mitosis. The first is growth. Uh, when your single cell created by the sperm and egg from your mom and dad created a zygote, that single cell started to divide, one becoming two, two becoming four, four becoming eight, and so on, until at birth you were about 26 billion cells and now today sitting in class or in this case sitting at home due to the coronavirus you are some 37 trillion cells so you've not only grown in number of cells but you've also grown in size so growth is the first main reason for mitosis the second is repair uh, we've all experienced this in some way or another, whether we simply tried skating and skinned our knee, or we tripped and fell, or we've done a slide tackle in soccer, or we've damaged ourselves in any other way. We are going to always have to repair the cells that we've caused damage to, and that damage is repaired by making new cells through the process of mitosis. And then lastly, we have replacement. And replacement is because old cells die, and as they die, they need to be replaced. Some cells, as in the case of a haircut, get cut away. Our skin cells are constantly drying off, dying and flaking away. Um, fingernails are trimmed. Red blood cells only last about four days and then are constantly replaced with new new red blood cells created in the red marrow so all of these are examples of replacement the new cells for growth repair and replacement are all created by the process of mitosis so mitosis again takes place by creating identical somatic cells. Hair cells become hair cells, skin cells become skin cells, liver cells become liver cells. For growth, growth in number and growth in size, repair for the damages we cause throughout our life, and replacement to replace the cells that have died and, and moved away, and the new cells must replace them. So mitosis creates identical cells with the same exact genetic information, chromosomes, and DNA. And as I said, skin cells create skin cells, liver cells make liver cells, and bone cells make bone cells. You wouldn't want bone cells appearing on the surface of your skin. You wouldn't want liver cells in the middle of your brain. So we want always the repetition of consistency of the same genetic information guaranteeing that the cells remain the same. So what we're looking at with mitosis is we're going to guarantee these three factors. Genetic continuity, that the DNA, chromosomes, and information in the cell is consistent. Structural continuity, that the structures of the cell remain consistent so that skin cells are skin cells, liver cells are liver cells, brain cells are brain cells, and lastly that the functional continuity remains the same so that these cells will do what they need to do for our survival. So again, mitosis guarantees genetic continuity, structural continuity, and functional continuity of all the cells of our body. Now, in the human body, all of our cells have 46 chromosomes. These cells are called somatic cells. Now, mitosis creates these body cells. Mitosis will create all the cells of the body except gametes. Mitosis does not create sperm and egg from the male and the female. Gametes are created, reproductive cells are created by a process called meiosis. So when we're looking at the cells of the body, skin, liver, bone, blood, we are looking at the cells called somatic cells. And in our bodies, we have 46 chromosomes in each of those cells. 
Now, that 46 number came from 23 chromosomes from your mom, 23 chromosomes from your dad. And this combination gave us our 46 chromosomes. The reason there were only 23 chromosomes for your, from your mom and 23 chromosomes from your dad was in the production of sperm and egg through meiosis, those, the chromosome numbers were cut in half. So for our purposes, we are going to start with 46 chromosomes, we're going to split it to 92, or double it to 92, and then split it back to 46. Now, this process of mitosis is part of what is called the cell cycle. Now the cell cycle is divided into stages or phases. Now the first phase is interphase. This is not part of mitosis. Interphase is the normal everyday activities of the cell's life. This is when the cell is doing what the cell is supposed to do. Mitosis occurs in prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase which are the four phases of what is called mitosis. Then the cells actually divide into two new cells through a process called cytokinesis. Remember that the prefix cyto means cell. Kinase means to cut. So to cut the cells in two is called cytokinesis. So to look at it another way, the black ring around the outside represents interphase. Interphase is the largest portion of the cell's existence, usually about 80% of the cell's life. Interphase is broken into three subphases called G1, S, and G2. G1, referred to as gap 1, is when the cell is living its normal life. It's growing conducting metabolic functions, the centrioles are replicating which are going to guide the process of mitosis. Then we move to the S phase which is called the synthesis phase. This is when the DNA is going to get doubled through a process called DNA replication. We double the DNA so that we can double the chromosomes so that when the cell splits we get the same number of chromosomes in each new cell. That brings us to G2. G2 is the final preparation for cell division. Typically organelles like mitochondria, lysosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, they are also going to double in preparation for that split so the new cells will have the organelles that are necessary. Now we begin the actual mitosis. This is called prophase. Prophase, the cell continues to grow. The centrioles move towards opposite ends of the cell. The nuclear membrane dissolves and disappears. Chromosomes thicken and condense. There are spindle fibers that are shot out from the centrioles and they grab onto the centromeres of the chromosomes and they begin to manipulate the chromosomes into position. Now to remind you, a chromosome is made up of four chromatids and held together in the center by a centromere, and this is the typical structure of a chromosome. We also remind you that those chromosomes are formed of the DNA coiled and coiled and coiled into minute molecules in each of the chromatids and we'll talk about DNA in later sections. Now, we then get to metaphase. In metaphase, all of the chromosomes will be lined up across the equator. Spindle fibers have pushed and pulled the chromosomes until they line up in the center of the cell. In anaphase, the spindle fibers contract or shorten very quickly and snap the centromeres in half pulling the chromosomes into opposite ends of the cell. And this leads us to telophase. In telophase, the cell membranes begin to pinch off. The centromeres are center, uh, the chromosomes are centralized in the center of the cell. Spindle fibers release those centromeres. The chromosomes pair up again and the nuclear membrane reforms. 
So this is basic images. Uh, this is actually a uh, whitefish, which is a animal cell. So here we have interphase, the normal life of the cell. Prophase, you see the thickening of the chromosomes and the dissolving of the nuclear membrane. And you see the asters forming the spindle fibers on each side of, with the centromeres. Here we have metaphase with the chromosomes lined up in the equator. This is the beginning of anaphase where the centromeres are being broken apart. Early telophase, those chromosomes are being pulled into opposite ends. And late telophase, we actually see the pairing of the chromosomes and the reappearance of the nuclear membrane. Now the last part of this cell division is the actual cytokinesis or splitting of the cells. The cell membranes continue to pinch off until two new cells are formed. These two new cells are called daughter cells, and these daughter cells will return to interphase. Now, we have cytokinesis in plant cells is slightly different. In plant cells, we don't actually have a pinching off of the membrane. Remember, plant cells have a cell wall. They are more rigid, and because of this, what we will have is the formation of a cell plate between the two new cells and that cell plate will eventually develop the cellulose necessary to form the new cell wall. Now these two daughter cells, just like in animal cells, will return to interphase and begin that process again. So here we have images of an allium which is an onion root cell process undergoing mitosis and you can see the distinct phases of the cell cycle interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Here we have another image of that same process of the allium root undergoing mitosis and here we have again those pictures of the whitefish blastula. And so in each case we can actually break down and recognize different phases of the mitotic process. And here's a nice summary page of that mitosis process. So hopefully this will be a good review of mitosis and the processes that create cell division to guarantee the growth, repair, and replacement necessary for the continuance of the somatic cells, maintaining genetic, structural, and functional continuity.